Hey guys, Slinky Pickle here. Um, just going to do a short video tutorial on uh, showing some information that the BC government provides to us that we can view in Google Earth um, and and get a lot of cool information that they have stored away in their databases. Well, it goes well. I'm going to put a graphic box right here, and if you click on this, it's going to take you to this site. And this site is uh, a list of a bunch of files that the government makes available to us that we can download free of charge. Well, they've already charged us through taxes, but basically you can click on any one of these and you can download the files. And there's a whole bunch here, but what I discovered after a bunch of playing around is that you don't want any of these. You go back near the top. You want this guy right here, BC Web Map Library. Because this one says it includes the entire library of all these other files. So you just want this guy. To get him, you're going to click this button right here. And it's going to ask you if you want to save it. So I'm going to say save as to my desktop. Save. You can save it wherever you want. Oops, this is my uh, standard downloader I use. I'm just going to get rid of that. Anyways, this is what you would have seen. Uh, and it saved it already. You can stick it in your desktop. You can put it, you know, just remember where you saved it to. Um, so it saved it already. And the reason it saves it so quickly is it's a very small file. You're not actually downloading all of the information. All you're doing is downloading a file that tells Google Earth where to go to find the information, in this case, to the government uh, online database. So we saved that file. And here it is on our desktop. This is my deer. You can't have that deer. Don't look at that deer. Um, so here's a file, bcgov web map library, and it's a KML file, and that just means that it can be read by Google Earth. So I'm going to, I already have Google Earth open, I'm going to open it here. From within Google Earth, I'm going to go file, open, and tell it to look at my desktop, I've already done that, and here's that file. So wherever you save your file, go back there now, find it, click on it, and say open. And it's going to open it here, and there's our data BC web map library, and under it is a whole bunch of information. These little arrows on the side allow you to expand or contract the heading, so I'm just going to contract it down towards one basic heading. Right now it's sitting under temporary places. I'm going to right click on here and say save to my places. And all it's done is it's moved it above temporary places. If it was in temporary places, when I leave out of Google Earth, it's going to erase it. By moving it up into my places, every time I come back into Google Earth, this information will be here. So that's why I put it up there. So we'll expand that out. We've got a ton of good information here. Um, I'll let you peruse it at your leisure. Uh, you can really get lost in here for hours. But uh, I just want to go over a couple of ones that are kind of of interest to, to, to many people. Land ownership, that's one. Uh, licenses and permits. In there, we're going to find cut blocks and, and forestry roads. And down here under wildlife and plant species, we're going to find management units. Uh, oh, and licenses and permits. In there, we're going to find um, um, trap line boundaries. So we're going to go to land ownership. Now, anytime you click on one of these little dots to enable this list. This area over here is going to zoom out on you. So if you're zoomed way in uh, and then you come over here and click, it's going to zoom you back out. So your best is to start zoomed out and then work your way in. So we're going to click this little button and you can see the map zooming out on us. Once we've clicked that and we've enabled this, we're going to scroll down and we're going to find a whole bunch of stuff. And like I said, you can go through this at your leisure, but the one we're really interested in is this one right here, Integrated Cadastral Fabric. Open that up, and we have a couple different ownership categories, private, crown, crown provincial, crown federal, crown municipal. Well, we're interested in private. So you see that little swirly there that went? Let's see if I can do it again. Turn it on. There you go. Anytime I turn it on and so enable something new, you get this little icon that looks like it's pausing. That's because it's actually going to the BC government database and getting that information for you. 
It's not stored in the file. It's going and putting a live link to the government site and getting that information. Now, we're zoomed out so far in Google Earth that if we tried putting every boundary on here right now, we would just plug it up. So there's BC. We're going to move in just to some arbitrary spot. Oh, where do we want to go? There's a good little spot. Uh, let's go right along here. And I'm going to pause for a minute and do nothing. And what it's going to do, it's going to take a minute. And there you go. All the little yellow blocks are private property. So what it's done is it looked at the area that I'm currently viewing in Google Earth, gone to the government website, gathered the data on the um, bound for private property boundaries, and has displayed them there. If I move over here, okay, now it starts to look like there's no private property over here. Well, there is. The reason it's not showing, because it only showed where I was. Again, if I stop moving around and pause for a couple of seconds, runs to the website, grabs the data, there's all your private boundaries again. Okay, so you can look anywhere, anywhere in BC. So where are we at here now? Sure, let's go into the metropolis of Clinton. All right, there we go. And again, we pause and we wait and it's going to draw all of our property boundaries. There you go. Oh, that's a nice piece of property right there. Okay, so that's anywhere in BC. You can toggle that on or off, uh, but you have to pause and let it catch up. You can't be zoomed too far out, and conversely, you can't be zoomed too far in. If I'm in this far, pause, let it catch up, and it probably won't show anything. No, it does. Okay, maybe I've got to be in a little closer, but you can get in so far that it doesn't show you any information. So you can't be out too far, can't be in too far. Um, and there you go. All right, so that's that's property usage. So I'm going to minimize that. Okay, so we did land ownership. Oops. Oh, yeah, zoomed out again. Um, next one I want to look at is licenses and permits. We're going to enable that. And we're going to look in here. This one's pretty cool. Forestry cut blocks, forestry roads. So let's go in and look at a spot. Oh, let's go here. The reason I'm picking a spot like this is I'm trying to find a spot where, well, there's there's some cut blocks. Uh, we've got some information. The problem with Google Earth is a lot of the data is often outdated. So here's 2003 data. So there's a cut block here and there's a block here and a block here and a block here. But I'm going to turn on, oh it's going to zoom back out on me. No, oh, no it didn't. So all forestry cut blocks I'm going to turn on active forestry cut blocks outline. I'm going to click that button. Give it a minute and it'll show. Okay. So here's a block that we already knew was there. Here's one we didn't know was there. So most likely between 2003 when this imagery was taken and now this has been logged. Same with this area here. So you can look at areas that uh, although they weren't logged when the Google Earth image was taken, they may now be logged. Here's some more area. So it just kind of gives you a little more up-to-date area. Um, I don't know of a way to make the text smaller. I don't know of a way to turn the text off. It's kind of a pain, but it's there. So that's cut blocks. In addition to cut blocks, we have forestry roads. So active forest road sections. So, you know, you look in here, you can see a couple of roads. That's all fine. Uh, but there may be, may be new roads. So I'm going to turn, where was I going? There we go. Turn that on. Same thing, pause and wait. And here's new forestry roads. So anything in green is an, is an active forest road. Um, it may be new, it may be old but you get the idea. So they may have punched a new road through, you know, in the case of if they've, if they've got a, a new cut block here, there may be a new road in that area. In this case, there wasn't, but so there's all your forestry roads. There's all your cut blocks. Kind of a cool feature. All right, let's turn those off. Uh, the bottom of licenses and permits is trap line boundaries. Not quite sure why they put it in here, but I guess it falls under permits. So, if I turn that on, I'm going to look at the same area now, and it's going to show me 
trap line boundaries in that area. Now I'm most likely zoomed in so far that I'm inside a boundary, so I'm just going to back out a ways and let it try it again. Again, like before, you let it pause, give it a minute. So here's all your trap line boundaries. Unfortunately, they're not numbered. Uh, you know, with this information, you, if you if you know the general area of one, you can figure out. You know, this is the the, the one I'm looking at. Um, but it allows you to, you know, look at the boundary that a, a given trap line follows. Trap lines. Okay, turn that off. Now I'm going to go down to wildlife and plant species. I'm just going to turn that on. Scroll down here to the bottom of here. Wildlife management units. I'm going to turn that on. And again, we're zoomed out a little too far, so we're going to go into about here, and we'll come on. Oh, come on! And I got to go a little further. There's your management unit areas. Nice, pretty colors. No information as to what the actual unit number is or anything like that. Um, it's kind of a pain that way. These, these uh, headings that are, some are, are black, some are blue. The blue indicates that it's actually a link. You can click on that link. And there, there's a, a, an index. Isn't that a handy thing of all the different colors and all the different management unit numbers? And if you can tell the difference between that yellow, that yellow, that one, and that one down there, good for you, because I sure can't. So this is a useless uh, piece of information, so I would leave it turned off. Um, but at least you have the boundary. You can work with your regs, figure out uh, which one you're looking at, and then from there you can zoom in on here and and, uh, and find the actual boundaries a little better than what's showing the regs. Now there is another really cool tool for for finding wildlife management unit areas. I'll probably post that one in another video tutorial at some other time. Uh, it's not in this government supplied file. Uh, I personally don't use this one, but it's the easiest one to give you right now. So. Um, anyways, there's your man wildlife management unit areas. Um, you know, like I said, there's a ton of good stuff in here. Uh, I won't go into it, but I mean, caribou distribution, grizzly population status, um, winter ranges for ungulates. Uh, there's just a ton of good information in here. And uh, crack a beer, sit down and, and wander your way through, uh, through here, and you'll find some really good stuff. Anyways... If you need any more information, uh, you know how to get a hold of me on the forum, PM me, and uh, I'll try and help you out. All right, guys, good hunting, and uh, like I say, if you got any questions, let me know. Thanks. Bye.